The next trick of the trade, and I admit that I may be slipping in some things here that I don't know if they're actually tricks, but if I didn't think or, or have an opportunity to talk about it in the modules, I thought, here's one of my opportunities to slip it in. And that is the idea of what kind of ending the movie's going to have in Hollywood. There's, there's really, I'm gonna break it down to three possibilities. The story can have a happy ending, a sad ending, or a tragic ending. A happy ending is the hero is pursuing the goal. If there's an inner journey, the hero finds the courage, step out of their identity, and then in their essence, they make the final push, cross the finish line, and win. And they go live happily ever after if it's a love story or romantic comedy, and they save the day if it's an action movie or a thriller, or they rescue someone if it's a different kind of thriller, or they, they help the, the team, or they win the competition, whatever. That's a happy ending. You know what that is? Because most Hollywood movies end that way. Not necessarily worldwide, but in Hollywood, that's a, a sort of a mainstay. The next kind of ending is a sad ending. A sad ending simply means that there is significant loss at the end, even though the hero did find the courage to move into her essence and did everything she could, or even achieved the goal, but it involves a loss as well. So take a, uh, if you take a movie like Titanic, that's, that's sort of classic big box office movie that has a sad ending. But Rose does change. She does stand up for herself. She does find passion, you know, herself, like she always, that was her, her sort of longing. And she does, you know, win the love of Jack, even though they're only together for a couple of days. But the fact that he then dies and she's alone and goes on to New York and has to go on without him, that's sad. And that's part of the appeal, you know, dry, not a dry on the house sort of thing. And then they sort of soften it by saying that she and Jack are gonna meet together back in, you know, Titanic heaven, I guess, <laughs> on the boat of sailing. This is just an aside, but I always did wonder, you know, Rose has a granddaughter, and that means, so Rose got married to somebody and had kids and then this grandchild. And I wonder what that husband she had thinks about the fact that she's gonna spend eternity with Jack on Titanic, and he's probably up there thinking, what am I, chopped liver, you know, that you just two days with that guy and you figured all about me. But we, we aren't supposed to think that way. We're supposed to just feel uplifted by the end. But that's a sad ending. Or any ending pretty much where the hero dies in the end after doing something uh, courageous or righteous, like Gladiator or, or any number of other examples, that's sad, but it's not tragic. Because tragic, to me, means the hero fails to find the courage to do what they needed to do, to do the right thing, in order to, to, to do, take the, 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 pro, the right path to live fully, to be courageous, and that's how they save the day. That's how they cross the finish line. But a character who fails because he or she doesn't find the courage and can't find the strength, the inner strength to leave her identity and live in her essence, that character fails to achieve the goal and has lost that possibility forever. So that's a tragedy. Um, uh, a good example of a tragedy, it's been a few years now since it was made, is Brokeback Mountain. Because in that movie, the, it was a love story. And so, so uh, Innes, his goal, the whole thing, was to win the love of Jake. But he never could find the courage to step up and declare that he was gay and let anyone know that. And so in the end, he never did really get to fully connect. He never found fulfillment. He never achieved his goal. And he is left without question a tragic figure where all he's got is an old flannel shirt in his hand and that's all that's left, his possibility. That ship sailed and he can't do that anymore. And in other versions, if you, if you take the two Godfather movies back to back, that's a tragic story in that even though Michael Corleone got a lot of what he wanted, he didn't get what he wanted at the beginning. You know, he succumbed to the very thing he said at the beginning he wouldn't, and that is, he said, that's my family, that's not me. And he's actually become the very thing he hated the most. So what's this got to do with your story? Well, occasionally you could tell a sad story that can be very moving and touching and even instructive, where you lost, you lost the love of someone or someone passed away or you, you had some sad events occur even at the end of your journey 
but you still were able to transform because of that, achieve some version of what you wanted, and that could be the kind of story you're telling. Also, there are times in movies where the hero doesn't achieve what he wants, not because he didn't have the courage, but because he realizes at the end, that's not really what I should be going after. I should make my goal something bigger than that, something more, more uh, if not grand, something more moral, something more righteous, something with more humanity and unselfishness. And that's sort of the case in Green Book, where he does get home by Christmas, and he certainly does the job of, of uh, taking Dr. Shirley around. But part of what he wanted out of that is money, and apparently he didn't get the money because they didn't get to do the final concert on the tour. That's never really resolved, but he's willing to do that. One of my favorite examples of that is uh, uh, a movie quite, quite a few years back now, Stand By Me, where they go to find the dead body, and the whole reason the hero of that story, Gordy, wants to find the body is so he can get a picture, his picture in the paper and his parents will pay attention to him. And in the end, because of the arc he goes through in the journey, he decides that's not what we should be doing. This shouldn't be about glory. And he, and he steps out of his identity and the need for his parents to determine everything he does. And he stands up for himself and stands up to the bully. And then they make it an anonymous tip. So again, that's, it's not a happy ending. You might call it sad. Or it's, a, it's, a, it's what the hero fails to get. But it's not a tragic, tragedy. Now, another kind of story that fits into this, I don't know if you call it sad, but one of, the, one of the kinds of stories you want to be able to use is what I call a failure story. And this is where something happened to you. Actually, it could be about you or it could be about someone else. Probably not a satisfied client, but someone you had worked with or known or whatever. And this could be a situation where you failed to get what you wanted or this person failed to get what you wanted. Might be because of lack of courage, because of an identity issue, or it might be just that hero of your story, whoever it is, just didn't do the right things that they needed to do to accomplish the goal. So it's a life lesson. It's like, well, if you want this, that's not the way to go after it. And it's a very valuable kind of story for you to have, especially if you have the opportunity to tell a follow-up story. So you could tell a failure story from your past where you took the wrong path to get what you wanted and you failed, and now you're telling your audience, but then when I tried the method I'm trying to convince you of, when I'm following the principles that I want you to follow, when, you're, when, I'm, uh, persu when I persuaded you to work with me or use my, my program or my product, then you too will have a success. So it's like, I tried the wrong way, that didn't work. Now I'm t but then when I did it this way, I did succeed, it had a happy ending, and that's how I'm guiding you to do the same thing. That's why I'm trying to take you in that direction.